hello everyone and welcome to my channel in this video I'll continue talking about how we can use LTTNG to trace various things in the Linux kernel in this video I'll be focusing on how we're going to trace disk events disk is a block IO device I'm not going to drill down into a full disk analysis but what I'm going to do is give you a short overview of how you would trigger disk related events collect them and load them up in trace compass and what are the views in trace compass that are related to disk and io activity okay so this is a script that i have it's a bash script written to uh, collect disk related events uh, i'm just going to create a session the the parameter is passed to the script lttng session is going to be created then i will collect all the system calls but not all of them i'm just going to collect the system calls that uh, are related to disk which is either you open or close a file you write or read and these are generally these are generally the ones that would relate to activities on uh, uh, a disk then i'll enable the scheduler events and interrupts and of course these in particular which relate to disk events so block request and everything else so what are these if i do lttng list dash k just gonna grep for block rq these are these uh six events requeue complete insert issue merge remap now uh not going through a lot of detail basically rq issue is whenever the file system issues a request to the disk either read or write right because the file system may have the file that you want to read already in the cache or when you write to the file system maybe it's just going to read uh, write to the cache and then not really write to the disk until later on when you when there are a lot of uh, sectors that should be written to the disk for performance reasons or right or later on when you run sync or flush the output of uh, your file uh, so anyways this this means that issue this is called by the file system uh, triggered by the file system whenever it issues an actual sector read or write to the disk uh, this would merge a number of them this inserts uh, some requests there, there and then whenever the um, disk is finished with the with the task of reading or writing it will send back uh, or it will actually trigger this event block request complete right and then there are other events as well but we're not going to go into the a lot of the details here okay so let's just run that script lttng disk i'm just going to say demo disk uh, but before I run it, I'm going to create a sort of a disk workload. Um, let's just do a bunch of copies. And also, let's do a cat on load file, which is a large file, one gigabyte file. So I'm just going to run these first and then go and run this guy okay so this one this one and this one okay so tracing is on cat is happening this load is running we'll wait 10 seconds up stored here the traces are stored here i'll go into trace compass which i already have running right click on my project here i'm going to import trace import browse lttng traces and then demo disk right open select this guy finish rename all demo disk okay so let's see if we have these block rq events yes we do right we do have these filtering on them will give us yeah we have a bunch of them okay okay now 
uh, you're already aware with uh, the resources view, control flow view, and whatnot, and the CPU utilization. What I want to show you here is uh, the uh, views related to disk events. Okay, so I'll open this uh, part, and then under views, let's go and look at the uh, input output. Okay. So disk I.O. activity. So here you see the there's the experiment name, and then this is basically the device, the block device, major and minor number. And then we only had writes, apparently. Uh, we didn't have any reads, unfortunately. Because maybe that file that I was catting there, I was reading, maybe it was read from the file system cache, right? So in general, we would have had reads and writes. This is because of uh, the workload that I chose. And now, this is basically the throughput of, of reads and writes. Uh, actually, in this case, only writes, right? And I can zoom out and see what was happening. So this is how the, these are actual sector writes. This is the throughput. So let's say I peaked out at six point, or oh, well, six gigabytes per second write rate okay so this is very nice information you want to know oh when what my disk was very busy why am i being blocked on disk but hey i look i'm blocked on a read or write system call but hey uh happens that the 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 rate the throughput is is very high here so probably some sort of a discontention is going on okay so let's go and see what else we have we have the just Actually, you know what? I don't need this. The disk requests. This is also interesting. Uh, again, th these are the uh, disk. Uh, is it, these are the, the driver queues. Okay. Uh, this is the driver queue. So here we see the the. Um, the sectors that are being written in this case a read would be i think blue but because we don't have these are all red so it's a right um going down we should see yeah, a weight queue as well so this is a weight queue this this is basically uh so we is essentially the, the the this device has an execution queue and it has a weight queue Right. Uh, the wait queue is that you go to the wait queue so that you're you you are given the chance to be written. Your write has to wait in the wait queue for it to be then executed. Right. Uh, but generally, you usually end up in the execution queue, which is like you immediately like the disk would start doing your write for you. Right. So here I'm saying that the right queue, like if I look at the statistics here, the right queue is the minimum time that you, you wait in the right queue is seven microseconds. The maximum is 22 microseconds. So it's essentially negligible. And you only have 24 requests waiting in the wait queue. And the total waiting time is 262 microseconds. Right. So uh, we really don't have to worry about that. The execution queue, on the other hand, um, we have some writes and some flushes. A flush is, is like a, uh, a bunch of writes all together. It's a flush operation. Okay, uh, It usually takes a lot more time. So writes uh, are minimum 8 microseconds, maximum almost 300 milliseconds so we have writes that actually take 300 milliseconds this is a lot uh the average is 64 milliseconds and the total amount of time the disk spent writing is almost a thousand seconds 939 seconds and then we have flushes flushes that um minimum is almost well actually 290 microsecond and then maximum is the same so we only had seven flush operations right and this is the total and this is the selection right so whenever i select something 
with my cursor that's that's what i would get so this is this is the selection right this is the selection part so when it says selection this is the statistics for the part that i have already selected which is only this part okay so let's go back to disk requests um okay okay so let's uh, pay a little bit of uh, attention here and see what are these driver queues and wait queues the driver queue is basically um the queue that the driver has for all sectors that are being written to the disk so anything showing up here means that the driver is actually trying to write that to to the disk so the start of this if i just zoom in a little bit you can see that the start of here is a block request issue on device on this is the device number and this is the sector uh 2560 2, sectors and uh how many bytes is basically 1.3 uh, uh gig uh, megabytes and uh the the tid that's doing this is the the copy uh, actually it's the uh tid and then this is the uh the copy uh command doing this so what this is saying is that the block device the, the actually uh, the the device driver sorry the device driver has started writing this sector right and then if we go a little bit further we see another block request issue right uh for the same device but a different sector right uh, this means that a new uh, number of sectors, like as a as a block, are being written. And then, if we go further, we see that okay, a third uh, block is now being written. Uh, but when are these finishing? Actually, if I go to the end of this part, okay, let's. Just, so this this was when the block request was issued. But if I go to the end, you can see that the block request complete. Uh, I see this one here. So th the entire time it took to write these um, 1.3, like this 1.3 megabytes of data is basically uh, 857 microseconds, right? And then during this time, there are all these other requests that are being piled up in the block, in, in, in the device driver, right? So at this point, if we look, we have a, uh, the the device driver is handling 39 well the first one was zero so 40 requests at the same time right so this is why you have these kind of skewed diagrams because block requests are uh, for actually the writes are coming in and then leaving one by one Okay, so that's that's what it is. And the thickness is basically the number of sectors. So here it's less thick, it's the 128 sectors. Here it's thicker, so it's 256, uh, 2560 sectors. Okay, if I go further down, you'll see that I have uh, the waiting queue. Now, the wait queue is a software queue that the file system submits the request to, and this the beginning of a wait queue is uh, you, you see the block request insert, which is basically inserting the request into the queue. This is not the moment where the drive, device driver actually starts the write. This is before that. So file system is uh, queuing these in, a, um, in, in the waiting queue, in the software queue. So uh, it's inserted here and then here, at the end of that, you can see that there's a block request issue, meaning that now this request in the software queue is being issued actually on the device by the device driver. So if I go up, this should align with the beginning of one of those uh, driver hardware queues, basically here, this one. It aligns with this one. So it's actually this one that's being written, right? And uh, if you look at the trace and you go back you will probably see like a write system call before this uh, a while before this uh, we can actually take a look and see if we can find something like that here so here 
or this one is this one is a read but yeah this one is a write for instance so this was this one is a write we can't really say which one of these writes corresponds to which one of those um, requests on on the device driver easily because these are for the file system and these are uh, and the other ones are for the actual disk and there isn't a one-to-one -one correspondence because uh, these writes may actually end up being written to the cache right and not really physically written to the disk until many milliseconds later on right uh, so the, the, there's that kind of vague correspondence you can't really figure it out exactly from the trace there are ways to do that but uh, we're not going to get into that for now so this is uh, what I wanted to show you about the uh, disk views right this is a very nice view telling us that our disk is actually very busy because we have a very long list of uh, requests that are being written to the queue so at this point I, I at a lot of points in time I can see that there are 384 uh, requests that are being um, written to disk by the driver right this is what it says okay so this is the end of this video about uh, tracing block devices using LTTNG by collecting these trace points as well as some other traces. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much.